stream. Um, we're going to go back to uh, trying to get the Citronix uh, security cam set up. <clears throat> and let me check my audio. Okay. It's all working. <clears throat> so, um, the uh, first thing I want to do is uh, this is the camera. Um, I've got it mounted on a board so that I can, you know, test it and everything, have it stand up and aim it where I want to. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's Wi Fi. It'll hook, you know, it'll run on Wi Fi. If I can get, figure out which way to turn this. Okay. It has uh, Ethernet power. Uh, you can option, you know, the Ethernet. Well, it's an optional way to use it or and to set it up. Uh, besides, uh, with the mobile or uh, a, a Windows application, and uh, <clears throat> then there's a reset button. And I learned the hard way. I thought I understood. I did. I read through the whole manual, so and I kept looking back and looking back. But anyway, the. Uh, the reset button, I thought it just, you know, like most reset buttons, they just reboot the device. This one resets it to the software to factory defaults and reboots the device. So, so after clearing my settings uh, and wondering where they went, <clears throat> I figured that out. So, uh, but what I, and I've been using, I set it up over Wi-Fi in the Firefox web browser. I run, I'm running on this machine here that I'm streaming from. Uh, Fedora 28 behind I need to up, up one of the other things I need to do is update my you know operating system but uh, the uh, I've been using my own cat 6 cable I already had that was already plugged into my router but I'm going to go ahead and open they send you a cable I guess I'll just cut that all the way off once it's open it doesn't need that hanging around <clears throat> so um, I thought well um, oh yeah this is cat 5e <laughs> So, but there could, this is a lot shorter. Mine's 15 or 20 foot long or something. So, um, on the I'm using the uh, H.265, which is supposed to be lower on bandwidth and higher quality and even a smaller file size than H.264. And uh, I want to use that if I can. Uh, what I am going to, today I'm going to compare the difference. Uh, you know, you can go back to H.264. There's one. H.265 setting, and there's three H.264s, you know, kind of like good, better, best kind of thing. But uh, this one is, you know, about as far as my, not quite, I can reach my arms out a lot further than that. You can kind of see that. Looks like it's one, two, let's see, one, why don't I just measure it? I've got a tape sitting right here. We'll just measure it. Uh, it is... Five feet, three feet. That's what I was thinking. Three to three and a half feet. It's sixty-two inches is what I got there. So three feet, two inches. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to get up here and plug it into the router. And uh, I think I'll put. I always like to use twisties. They give them to you. See, so might as well use them. I always uh, keep them on one end of the cable, and then I can, you know, roll it up and keep it together. It's, it's at least it's not one of those ones that's like a piece of wire that you know was gonna fight you every move you make. Uh, it didn't, and like I said, I already looked at it in the bag. Let's look at it again. Cat 5e, which is not quite as fast of a data rate as uh, Cat 6, but it will do gigabit. Uh, my router, well, on the wire, it's a gig. My router's gigabit, thousand megabits. On the wired, but on the wireless, it's actually supposed to be faster. Well, I guess it's only well. I think it's supposed to be. I can I, I need to look at the specs. Uh, I'm always saying that. Thousand to twelve hundred on the two point four gigahertz yeah, Cat Five E. And just a bunch of other information. Uh, and so two point four gigahertz. This camera only works with two point four gigahertz. It doesn't do the five gigahertz. So it can't you know that's irrelevant here with, um, with this camera. But the 5 gigahertz does about 1700 is what it's supposed to do. I don't have, actually, I think I have one thing. I think my, oddly enough, the oldest laptop, the Dell 6000 that I have, I think it's the only thing I got that'll do, uh, that'll see cat, you know, uh, 5 gigahertz connections. Uh, but it doesn't matter because 
it's 54 megabit wire wi-fi chip in it so it doesn't matter you know which one you hook up to you ain't gonna get any more speed and cat the five uh i've tried it out you know i played with it uh the five gigahertz won't go well it won't it'll drop out in the living room and well our my old my tp link sometimes will drop out in the living room i think depending on the you know the air traffic the radios and there's so many wireless connections right here around my house now wireless devices <clears throat> and plus all of the other things in the air that that uh that tend to interfere and cross talk and all that stuff um so anyway um the um uh, this one does really well i've never had any trouble with it dropping out in the living room or anything you can get well, this is one end of the house, and then the you know the hall, the living room, the kitchen, dining room, which we just use for kind of like a sitting room. Well, there's a table in there, but in the corner, <clears throat> and then uh, the kitchen, and then the garage. And so, as soon as you go out into the garage, uh, you still get a signal, but it's so weak I can't do my you know like I'm doing. I'm streaming my cameras. I would, when I do my live streams, I'm streaming my one or two cameras over the Wi-Fi, and then my audio on my lapel mic, which I'm fixing to start using. It's streaming over another I'm using phones for cameras, so uh, <clears throat> just using the one now to keep the bandwidth usage down so that when I put this new camera on the Wi-Fi at the 5 megapixel camera, you know, as opposed to about a little under 2 megapixels on these others, uh, it won't overwhelm my, my, I won't, my problem. Won't uh, I can test it without knowing and know that my Wi-Fi shouldn't be overwhelmed, you know. So uh, because I've been doing this these videos this way for two or three years so i know that if i run two cameras and and then one one as a mic uh, as a wireless mic send an audio over wi-fi that's pretty much all you can do and it not overwhelm you know and not start making you drop too many frames but like i said when you go out try to take a camera out into the uh, garage or the driveway you still get a signal but it starts dropping frames so much that the audio is like I always forget if it's behind or ahead. Uh, let's see. I think the audio ends up being ahead of the uh, like right now. If you look at my lips, they're not completely. They're not accurately matching what I'm saying, and uh, that's because of the way I'm doing it. But that's just the best way I have to do it. You know, uh, I don't have any other regular cameras, and of course, you would have to with a regular camera. You would have to shoot unless it would hook up to your you know stream or hook up to your computer some way. Then you'd have to shoot the video, then edit it. You know, or anyway. Well, you couldn't do a live stream with it. So anyway, um, let's get to, um, let me see, I've already moved my keyboard. Um, having a hard time keeping my head straight here. Let's see. My head straight here. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me listen to that audio and put this mic up here. Make sure that I, I see a signal, but sometimes you see a signal and you don't have it on your stream. So let's make sure we got that. I think I messed up all together. Yeah, I did. I went back. I somehow accidentally hit the... Try to get it to the end. Oh, that doesn't work. I, yeah, some, I got a hold of the... Uh, I clicked on the play bar so it brought my video back to the beginning instead of just unmuting the... Uh, Let's quit trying to do that. I have trouble with that every time I do it. I it end up have fiddling around with it. What I usually do is just hit the mute button on the front of the laptop. <coughs> yeah, that's the bad thing about wearing the lapels. I make a cough or make a noise. <coughs> there we go. Have a cough and fit. <coughs> so uh, I have such bad allergies. And then I can do them. <coughs> get away from it. It's just the way it is. Ah, uh, so anyway, um, <clears throat> I can move around now. So I'm gonna get this um, and plug it in. And uh, let's see, yeah, I know which cable. I'll have to unplug one in order to have a place to plug it in. But this other one, well, it's another Cat 5e cable, a little short one that I have, maybe shorter than that one. But my, what I'm trying to do, I just wanna test some brand new cable, you know. Where does it go? Right there. No, it doesn't go right there. Oh, no. What did I do? Okay. 
Okay, did I lose my stream? Uh, <clears throat> it's one good re thing, reason why uh, to back up your, st your, your st live stream to a video on your computer because I may have just... I just remembered, I, I, try to, I try to remember, just don't mess with the router ever while you're live streaming. I grabbed the wrong cable and wouldn't you know it, it wasn't just some random cable. It was the one going straight to my uh, to my modem. So I disconnected myself from my modem. I'm not sure if uh, I lost my stream or not. I try to remember, just don't mess with the router. Yeah, I got lucky and uh, <clears throat> didn't complete, lose my stream. I got it plugged back in before, oh, you know, I lost my stream. So unless it quits here in a minute, but it should be fine. My one good thing about, I run Fedora's Linux. Fedora, if it loses a network connection, it just, uh, it just fixes it pretty quickly. So, uh, <clears throat> um, Well, and what I did was I unplugged my router, so, you know, actually the computer didn't lose its network connection. Uh, it just lost its, you know, the router lost its internet connection. So there will be a glitch in the video, and if it's bad, okay, and my stream keeps going red and green, red and green, and that worries me. Okay, so, because uh, used, used to, when it went red, it was going to go down pretty much, but now it just gets red for long periods of time and I just got to where I don't watch it as much as these two because it doesn't go down hard too much and I don't see a lot of like lost drop packets and stuff in my uh, <clears throat> stream either when I look back at it so um, how do I need to do this completely okay ah so I'm going to get the camera. I thought I knew where I wanted that cable to go, but I didn't. It's not very long, you know, so I can't... I think I can set it up here on top of this other computer and get by with that. <clears throat> okay. Um... So what I'll do is, uh... set it down here on my keyboard tray and get it plugged in and then I'll uh, turn it you know plug in the power can't see it I can't see it save my life come on there we go so uh, oops. There it really just barely gets into the picture doesn't it but anyway you, you know every, I think pretty much everybody knows how to plug in. That's the twisty I put it on there. Plug in an Ethernet cable. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to see. I'm going to set it up here. And the only other thing i got to do now is plug in the power cable. So that shouldn't be. Cameras. I mounted it on that board and it, I, I didn't ever notice till yesterday or so, so that it actually looks crooked on the board. But. Uh, Okay, so let me get my power. It comes with a power cable that is, you know, regular wall wart. It runs on 12 volts. Yeah, 12 volts DC, 1 amp. And the cable's actually about 9 something. I think it might be close to 10 feet. You got to watch that when you're buying these things. A lot of them are like 2 and 3 feet long. That ain't going to go anywhere. I mean, if you're going to, you got to put, like I stuck this thing up in the window and all it did was, well, it's, LED lights came on. It, it was at night, and of course, all you could see is a, a pit. You know, I just made look, the mirror, the window into a mirror, <laughs> so that's all you could see was the camera taking a picture of itself. And plus, I, I don't want that. You know, I, uh, I'm, that's well. Besides the fact that I've run two batteries, I've got three of these phones, uh, these Alcatel A845L phones, uh, running them 24/7. <clears throat> So I can't keep doing that. They're already fairly old, but here's the worst one right here. It swells this one so much that it uh, won't even, you can't put it back in the phone. It, it, it disconnected its contacts from the, you know, in, the inside of the phone. It's, first thing I noticed was the back of the battery and it, 
keep on doing that and it could even be dangerous because that's called outgassing when they swell like that and I, I believe it's hydrogen that is the gas that it's putting out so of course it's been most pretty I mean that thing has been out of the foam for two or three weeks now it happened to it once and I let it sit for a couple of months and it went its swelling went down and uh, <clears throat> but then uh, you know it happened again so uh, Okay, now I'm going to, uh, anyway, I can't even use that battery, and I'm using one that's fair, about half as well as that one, the one that I'm, that's in this phone that's doing my audio, and then the other one, it's just well just a little bit, and I probably will go ahead and buy new batteries, because these phones, you know, even though they're not great cameras, they're, I think they're worth, if I, if I get them before they, you know, go away, they're, I found some, uh, New uh, new old stock of the OEM batteries for like six seventeen dollars I think it was basically each. So, uh, <clears throat> but I paid fifteen for the phone, so I kind of hated to do that. But the more I think about it, the more I think it's a good. It would be I, I there's you know I'm mostly just using for phones, but I do sometimes use them for other things. I don't have phone service on them. I'm mostly just using for cameras. I can get my words to twist it around here. So, uh, okay, that's plugged in. So it should be, I th I don't, as wide of an angle as this camera is, it should be, um, a little, uh, it's situated here in a little, bag that I have my camera in is <laughs> pulling on my pants pulling them down <laughs> we don't want that <clears throat> so uh, only in the back but uh, still now then what do I want to do okay um, <clears throat> well I'm just going to test uh, see how uh, how how the, the video looks you can tell by looking at it well Depends on what app I'm using or what, oh, not app. You know, everybody thinks apps are for phones and tablets, but I've always called software apps because that was one of the synonyms that everybody used long before those things were invented. So uh, when I say app, I may mean, I mean software of some sort because that's what, that software uh, on those apps are software as well. Sometimes I say software instead, but because <clears throat> I, I like it because it sounds better. <clears throat> okay. Um, check it. I have to, you know, when I'm using this mic, it's really a pain to... Okay, I'll use the mute button again. <clears throat> I did have that laptop to where I could see the whole screen, but I, well, I stack, it stack, set on a stack of boxes and different things. And I set something else up there that wasn't very thick, but it brought it, I, I didn't realize it was going to bring it up enough to, I don't have another place to put the thing, the other the box, but it's a box full of cameras, old cameras. <clears throat> that I, want, I kind of thought, well, I want those out where I can, you know, get to them if I want to mess with them. So, um, we're going to get on the desktop now and, uh, so there's my video I'm making, and system resources are okay. But I think I'll close the Crusader. See, there's my backup video. You can see it growing in size. That's why I like to have that open like that, so you can see that everything's okay. But I'm going to open up. I have an only a program that the I'm running for Door 28 Linux, <coughs> and I have a program called ONVIF Viewer. That can see, you know, that can work with this. And uh, let's see, I remember the. Uh, oh well, I've got one. Uh, I've got the wired connection uh, in there, I think already. And the uh, wireless, I think it was, I got it in there and it was working, and then I took it out because, you know, there's a picture, but it seems to be frozen. Yeah, see how it's really wild how this five megapixel. Uh, it's taller by far than it is wide, and see, it's the same about uh, basically the same width as my my screen on my computer. Uh, my resolution, which is uh, 
What is it? Nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Let me look at that again. <clears throat> Are we doing the uh, yeah? Nineteen twenty by ten eighty. We're on the desktop. Okay, nineteen twenty by ten eighty. When I see myself, and I think, oh, I'm not on the desktop because I'm, you know, because it's the way it normally is. <clears throat> but yeah, it's not. Uh, you know what, that cable may not be able to transfer the data near as fast as my Cat 6 cable. I didn't think Cat 5e was that much slower, but it usually when I first open this app up, unless this is the wireless connection I'm looking at, I'll have to check that out. But anyway, 1920 by 1080 is the uh, monitor, and that is 1920 wide by 1080 tall. So let's close that. The, uh, let's just go ahead and go to the settings, and that'll take us out of there. Oh, it doesn't tell you on this app. Um, the camera, oh, I don't have it in there. But this is 120, yeah, that's the wired connection. Huh. That is not working well. So I think there really is a, how do you make it full screen? This is kind of, it's not very much to this app, but it's actually kind of hard for me to remember how to operate it. That's just if you had a pan and tilt zoom camera. Now see, I can't. Uh, oh well, that gives you the whole picture without having a, a page up and down. So I'll leave it like that. Uh, funny thing is though, when you have it in that view, now it looks wider than it is tall. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. But uh, so that has me about half confused. Now I had decided that. It's 2650 or something by 1980 is what it is. I remember the 1980 was the same. Uh, and so I had decided, especially when in this application is what made me decide it, you know, that first full, full screen view, you have to page up and down to see the whole thing, and then left to right, it's fine. It could be fitting the left to right and not the up and down, though. But this is fitting it for sure now. I mean, obviously, because there's a little preview over there. See, now it's doing... It's doing like it should. It's it's pretty good, you know. It's not. It's got less. Uh, there's no hard, very little ghosting. I think I can see a little. You know, when I move my hand, you see it. It traces. If I move fast, you can kind of see it. I think that other camera. Well, let's compare. Now this camera here, my phones have always had pretty bad trace uh, ghosting. <clears throat> yeah, so you can really see that. So. Um, yeah, okay, that's more what I expected, but uh, how do you get it? I don't know how you make it go into full screen. There's no right clicking in anything in here. There's a little mirror menu down there that's just, you can get device information. Oh, there we go. That is one thing. It's called IP cam. There's a model number. That's not the model number that they give out. Firmware version. That's even close. That must be the model number of the motherboard or something. But this this program, you know, it's see, it's giving you what it sees, and I guess what it sees is the model number of the motor, motherboard or something, the main board, whatever you want to call it, firmware, serial number, and hardware identifier. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> um, that's interesting. But I thought maybe what I would really want to see out of a you know out of a video program is the uh, you know frames per second and all that stuff. There's a little uh, uh, tablet, uh, you know, Android app that I've used that tells you all that in real, you know, in real time. And I was going to get into that next, but first I wanted to just see if there's any difference. You have to click that view button. It starts out in full screen and then, and see, I can't find anything to put it. I got it into full screen by accident before. Clicking around on things like one of the, the, the some of those apps you can double click in them and just on the picture and it'll it'll do it. Uh, that is to add another phone. Uh, and I did want to go ahead and add the wireless connection. I'll have to see what the wireless IP is now. I've got it in my browser, so uh, let's go to settings so we won't be overworking my machine. It, when I try, when I I can't look at it in the browser, 
uh, it will overwork. It will start to lock up my whole machine. <clears throat> I don't know. It's something about the way that H.265 plays in Firefox. And my version is behind now. I, I was just thinking it was a little bit behind, but the other day I realized how far behind. From Fedora 28 to Fedora 31 is out now. So that's 28, 29, 30, 31. See, that's almost three years behind. I think 31 is just in beta. I think it usually only comes out in the summer, so. I think 31's in beta, unless it came out in the summer and I didn't notice it. I thought 30 came out this last summer. So anyway, <clears throat> that's how I tell time by the releases of Fedora. The years, that's how I tell when the years go by by the releases of Fedora. <laughs> Linux. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go to my, let's see, cameras. Yeah, now see, I have the IPs saved and everything. First, I'll just go to the, there we go. And I haven't changed the login yet <clears throat> until I get through with all the testing and make sure the things are going to work. <clears throat> okay, so if you click on the PC view, I don't know why it started asking you to log in again. It didn't do that at first. It used to just go on to it when you clicked on it. But if I stay here in you know, like just 30 seconds, it'll start uh, overwhelming my machine. <clears throat> uh, but uh, there's something I wanted to try. This right here says rate, and the settings, the frame rate, I think that's, I guess that's frame rate. I don't want to try it now, but uh, I'm thinking about, well, maybe I need to see. They're set at uh, 15 per second, but I just left it on the defaults, 15 frames per second, and which is a whole lot. If that's 45 frames per second, that's second, that's trying, but it shouldn't do more than 15 if the, you know, the settings are at that, but I said overrides these settings. So, you know, if that's the, case then no wonder it's overwhelming my machine it's just a quad core with four gig of ram but uh <clears throat> um what did i get in here for well i, I wanted to look at oh uh, well i just wanted to look through here a little a little bit let's see network wireless and i've got that all set up okay Image, you can change. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was. Okay. This, yeah, okay. Now, here's where you can set thing, uh, some of the. Uh, let's see, I think I might have changed that. I think that's. Uh, oh, indoor, outdoor, auto. I let, I don't remember. I remember uh, when those light, when it kept making the reflections in the window when I was trying to sh push, you know, look out the window with it at night. I noticed that the, oh, there it is, night uh, vision mode. I think it was on normal or something, and I've changed it to intelligent. So that maybe, but it didn't make any difference at that time. I don't know if you had to read it or what, uh, or just because it was night and it, those lights were going to be on. But I did notice when I changed different ones, uh, in one mode it would be LED, uh, red infrared lights turning on, and in another mode it would be just regular white LEDs turning on. You can see how bright it looks. Oh, now the browser's at. But I should still be going. Uh, and I might get some drop frames and stuff. But if I can close the browser. Of course, I have that, that other OMVI. AF app is running too. So uh, <clears throat> I um, can't even get over to my to kill. Uh, Firefox didn't respond when I tried to close it normally, so I'm going to kill it. Yeah, everything's acting up. OBS is using 71% of my CPU. I would be doing that. I went back down, but 
that recording is probably not going to be too great either. Let's see if I can kill any kill this app. If OBS doesn't settle down, I'll have to stop this stream and start another one. Maybe the best thing to do anyway. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I'm going to stop this stream as soon as I get everything killed. Get Firefox killed. Maybe I should go close OBS. When it, when you see the, I don't know if you can see that blinking up at the top left, top left of the screen, the app is blinking. That means that things are going haywire. Well, my memory's getting all used up. OBS is using up all my memory. So it's really OBS. Oh, that's web. That's, there you go. That is Firefox. The web is part of Firefox, which says web. It's already too, that much, that's a, see the machine keeps trying to lock up. I'm afraid I can't even change desktops to or workspaces to get over there and uh, normally stop OBS. See, OBS is only using 30%, 13% of my CPU, which is normal. It's not using any more memory than normal. So uh, now what you can do, if it just doesn't act like it's going to respond, you can uh, sometimes you, you can right click on the uh, application that's unruly. All the memory usage went away now. It, went, it came, came back. But look at that. It's going nuts. I'm not doing that. <coughs> uh, it's causing the whole computer to have a fit. So um, I'm trying to get to it. Where's it at? Send signal. There, but uh, I'm gonna get try to get this. Well, this is the worst it's ever done. I think it may be. I'm guessing that it may be because their Firefox is finally gone because I left this uh, other viewer app running, and it is does have a preview there. Oh yeah, it always has a preview whether you're uh, in the settings or the view. I didn't realize. I didn't remember that. Okay, so I can view it in two things at once on this computer. See, it's shut fine. But I'm going to have to, uh, it has not stopped the, the system monitor thing. Has It's just the machine's in real trouble. Uh, so I'm hoping that this video is still recording and working. But boy, it doesn't look like it. Look at that. Uh, OBS is not, can't hardly see the window. Now, now it came back. Okay, so. I'm just going to stop this recording right where I'm at and uh, reboot the machine and, and take a little break, reboot the machine, and uh, and then try to come back. Okay. Well, that I didn't expect. I knew I, knew I had trouble but with it. Anyway, let's just do that. It still hasn't shut down yet, at least not to my to, to my view here. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna kind of wait on it because if I, I mean, I can kill OBS and I will still have that video, but it it uh, doesn't. Uh, it'll still play, but it doesn't. The time in the video doesn't work. Uh, and like when you play it in VLC. But when you upload it to YouTube, then YouTube, because it loses the end of the video. It doesn't have the data on it saying this is the end of the video. So it doesn't know how long it is. Uh, VLC can still play it. Other programs probably wouldn't play it, some of them. But anyway, when you upload it to YouTube, it does still work uh, and everything's fine. But they see they transcode it from FLV, what I record, into MP4, and that fixes it. But uh, This is the worst trouble I've had since I've been messing with this camera worst trouble i've had in forever i don't think i've ever had this trouble this much trouble with my machine while making an o, you know a wild bs video a live stream video and a live stream it's the worst i've ever had
but I'm not sure if it's I'm not sure if it's going to shut out. Close the browser up there on my laptop that I'm using to monitor this. I may have to force close it. It does not seem to. It still uh, it still just says like it should have. Uh, it says stop streaming up there, and it already stopped. You know, lost its stream. So it should. I think it should have already went to. You know, you should be seeing start stream is what you should be seeing. So I think OBS has gotten whacked out. Uh, there might have been something that goes wrong when I'm uh, playing a, a video, you know, on the desktop, and OBS is record, you know, recording it as I'm playing. I may have done it before, but I did notice that, like, if I was watching a video in uh, VLC while recording the desktop, that it did seem to use a lot more resources. But I never had it go wonky. But I'm getting a freaking light show here, man. It's just like a strobe going through this thing. Let's go off of the... Yeah, you can't. It won't... Oh, there we go. It's still doing it. Went to the camera. It's still doing it. So, uh... But it does not seem to be responding to my clicking on anything over there on the start and stop. I'm going to hit the music out and hit stop and see if that works just for the heck of it. And the video may have already stopped. Uh, if you don't, I'll know when I see that. You know, try to watch it back with them where it stopped at. Well, it wasn't going to come back, but it looks to me like it's still recording. I guess I can open up my, uh, I can find out if that file's still growing. We'll, we'll see. <clears throat> but it looks like I'm going to have to force close the application. And if that's the case, then uh, <clears throat> I will... Uh, Oh, it's every program is going nuts. So I'm not going to really be able to sit there and watch that either. Okay, I got to force close it. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> so I'll just do the, uh, we'll just forget the music. We'll just go to the exit. 